Hello, everybody, and welcome to Letterbox Book Club. I am Mackenzie. And I'm Claire. And we also have a special guest, James, today, if you hear some baby noises. <laughs> so today we are talking about One Last Stop by Casey. I say McQuiston. I keep thinking there's an N in there when I'm out Same. and about thinking about it, and I know it's not yeah. right. McQuiston. Yeah. Yeah, or that's okay. if it's your um, microphone transcript, it's McQuincident. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll check and see what it's just come up with for then. Because I keep thinking McQuincident, and that's probably where I get the N, this imaginary N. Oh, no, it spelt it right this time. Oh, maybe it's just how you enunciated. Yes, my bad. Anyway, um, yeah, as I said, we're talking about One Last Stop, which is... Um, a great book and Claire will take us away and read the blurb before we get into it. All righty. Now this is just going to be strictly for Kenzie. I'm going to get to a <laughs> word <laughs> that isn't a spoiler. <laughs> I want you to pay close, a, pay close attention. I, okay. For cynical 23-year-old August, moving to New York City is supposed to prove her right that things like magic and cinematic love stories don't exist, and the only smart way to go through life is alone. She can't imagine how waiting tables at 24-hour pancake diner and moving in with too many weird roommates could possibly change that, and there's certainly no chance of her subway commute being anything more than a daily trudge through boredom and electrical failures. But then, there's this gorgeous girl on the train, Jane. Dazzling, charming, mysterious, impossible Jane. Jane with her rough edges and swoopy hair and soft smile, showing up in a leather jacket to save August's morning when she needs it most. August's subway crush becomes the best part of her day, but pretty soon she discovers that there's one big problem. Jane doesn't just look like an old school punk rocker. She's literally displaced in the time... Uh, in time frozen in 1970s, and August is going to have to use everything she tried to leave in her own past to help Jane. Maybe it's time to start believing in some things after all. Casey McQuiston's... Ooh, I feel like I didn't say that right. Anyway, One Last Stop is a magical, sexy, big-hearted romance where the impossible becomes possible as August does everything in her power to save the girl lost in time. How romantic. <laughs> Super romantic. So... We should start off by saying um, I've been listening to the audiobook version so that I've been able to read this um, while at work. So I've been listening to it. And in that, that means that I didn't have a blurb. <laughs> so Claire had messaged me about Jane saying, what would you do if you were displaced in time? And I was like, wow, thanks for the spoiler. I'm like, what spoiler? <laughs> it's in the blurb. Even though it's literally in the blurb. But I have since read the blurb and I have the hard copy of the book. <laughs> and then, yeah, you reminded me that you don't read blurbs anyway, so it would have been a surprise. Yeah, I don't read blurbs anyway until after the book. Yeah, but anyway. Alright, discourse. Do you or do you not read blurbs? <laughs> Let us know. Um, would you like to go over thoughts, feelings, emotions? Or? I thought this book was so cute and so adorable and as charming as well like pretty much the the gratification that's on the blurb at the back of the book it's pretty much i agree with that wholeheartedly like it's great it's funny it's such a very millennial book as well a lot of like yeah. young references young people references and stuff i'm a sucker for like a slight amnesia type of trope thing i know this yeah. doesn't <laughs> isn't exactly amnesia but like helping someone regain memories is just top tier very very funny book and i just love the name august as well i really like it yeah so, loved it. I think it's probably my favourite book, maybe, this year so far. And, Ooh. yeah. And just with the whole science aspect of, like, Jane, you know, being displaced and then them fixing that, it's like, I, like, I was a little lost, but, like, fair enough. Like, I'll go with it. Like, I didn't care about that at all. So, but yeah, great book. I loved it. What about you, Kenzie? I agree. Yeah, definitely. I really enjoyed this book. I think it was a really fun read i had a great time reading it um yeah i loved all the different little things that i love again like i understand that like it is a queer book but yeah i just loved the just casuality of the sexuality mm. and everything like it just it just wasn't an issue which is great because it shouldn't be an issue um but just the way yeah it's depicted and everything like nico and wes and isaiah and everything yeah and i 
Yeah, it's a book where, again, like... Actually, no, I'll wait. I'll wait till we start discussing it before we get into it. Ooh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Those are my thoughts, feelings, emotions. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I feel like this is part of the get off my chest moment as well. I want to talk about August's relationship with her mum real quick before I forget about it. Because I don't think it's toxic, toxic relationship, but it was definitely unhealthy in a way. Cause... Well, yeah, I think when August says towards the end, like, you only had me so that you would have an assistant. Yeah, and, like, having and her mum really isolating and, and uh, alienating her childhood experience almost just because she's so selfish and trying to find her brother. But, like, understandable, yeah. it's quite traumatic, you know, probably having a missing person and, you know, you're spending your whole life trying to find him. Like, yeah. I get that, but, like, yeah, I feel like August deserved a proper childhood. And yeah. a lot of her anxiety and everything, her, some issues, is probably stemmed from that as well. Yes, definitely. And, and also, just in general, this book covers, yeah, a couple other issues. Just, like, her relationship with her mother, just general anxiety about leaving college. Because I know American, even Australians, I guess, in their higher education, they, like, don't know what to do after studying. I think, though, like, I was, I don't know, like, she had spent her childhood being this you know like investigator for her mum or whatever and she was trying to get away from that and then I was a little bit disappointed that that's kind of like what she ended up doing in the yeah. end yeah I was like oh like you've yeah. worked so hard to get away from this but now you're just like giving into it yeah I suppose like I like I like that she's going to help other people find their missing Perha people, perhaps but... just with Jane, maybe she just needed a more of a personal experience, I guess, because yeah. she never really had a relationship with her uncle. Like, they never even met, I don't think. And she was yeah. just pushed into that sort of role. But now she really, she can fully empathise with what missing people, uh, people missing children and all that. Or just people, I guess. Um, yeah. She's come, like, a little full circle in her career journey. When she was complaining about picking subjects and stuff, I'm like, you are literally a PI. Just be a PI. <laughs> yeah, just be a PI. <laughs> but yeah, I just had to yeah get that off my chest. Yeah, I didn't really appreciate uh, her mother at all. And yeah, very ungrateful. And the whole just hiding her away from her grandparents as well. And like yeah, lying about- Yeah, her grandparents were paying her tuition. Yeah, and like essentially, not lying about being poor. Like, I'm sure that if, they, if she had to pay tuition, like I'm sure there'd be- you know, extra, extra in debt and, and, in, and poor and all that type of stuff. But yeah, it just seemed pretty pretty of her mother. Yeah, and then also, like, I understand it's her brother and he's gone missing or whatever, but, like, why did you take on the financial burden of the investigators and stuff to find him when that should, like, if your parents are rich? Yeah, or maybe... Like, why weren't they paying I, I don't. That? I don't remember, like, if the, it was said or anything about the grandparents' kind of involvement, maybe they just kind of let it go after a while. Because, like, for August's whole life, like, 23 years of trying to find somebody, oof. I mean, props for holding on for so long, but... Yeah. And then it just comes around that he's dead, so... Yeah. Okay, so what did you think of the way that Jane and August met? I thought it was a meet-cute situation, you know? Yeah, like nice a, like a, a clumsy save-the-day. Yeah. It's innocent. I love... I'm a sucker for a little meet-cute. <laughs> Yeah. I will say, so, yeah, very early on when um, August receives a file from her mum and it's like, oh, like, there's someone that, like, would have known him who was in New York at the same time and I was like, Jane. Yeah. I, I was like, check off scan. <laughs> yeah. I knew that she was connected somehow. Like, it's yeah. one of those things where it's not like, oh, I, f I figured it out so it must be bad writing or something, but nah, ooh, James, what are you doing? But she just, <laughs> it's just a nice simple build up and like you put the pieces together yeah. and it, it's great. Yeah, so I knew that like even yet without reading the blurb that like something was up with Jane. Although I was really intrigued early on because they weren't clear about the case and what this case was. So I thought this was yeah. going to be like another little murder mystery. And then yeah, yeah, I was like, some, is this murder? <laughs> somehow Jane's involved. But yeah, nah, I knew Jane was going to be connected at some point and I knew the drag queen party for the save the, the pancake parlor was going to be a guise for whatever yeah. resolution they're going to have. Yeah. But... And same with the, your grandparents yeah. left you money. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, that's going to save Billy. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great. I suppose, like, I don't know, people would want to call that bad writing because I predicted it. But, like, it's a good build-up. It's about the build-up. Yeah. 
but yeah, how they met cute and typical, you know, oh, you, I'll give you like a jacket or I'll give you a scarf, like, and you can keep it. Yeah. Or at least. I was thinking about now, like, I'm surprised that the scarf was able to leave the subway. Yeah, I mean, Jane couldn't leave. I was like, oh, like I guess it's an uh, inanimate object, but perhaps. I mean, she did say like some of the stuff in her backpack. She did like trade or steal and all that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will admit, yeah, I didn't really understand all the science part of it, and I guess like it is kind of fake science, but like it was interesting to see the way that it was all. Yeah, or how it all connects at one point. It was yeah. very Back to the Future vibes, you know. Yeah, destroy the clock tower. Yeah. Have a power, yeah. sur- have a power surgeon. <laughs> Uh, yeah surge create a blackout yeah did you think august was going to sacrifice herself i mean i suppose in like a realistic point of view she should have died she would have been fried yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no i'm just kind of glad that it was just like a safe safe landing but yeah yeah of course it took them so long to realize proper love. it's like i am your anchor here i need to yeah. be the one to help you and yeah. just the stomp on the foot and then the kiss goodbye yeah. almost. It was great. Oh, no. I loved it. After I love they just said they loved each other. I love the tension <laughs> as well because it's like August is saying a little bit and then Jane's like, what are you doing? And then August yeah. creeps forward, does what she does, and then bam. Yeah, no. Nah, Did it was you great. think <clears throat> that once Jane was gone, that Jane was gone? I mean, it really was a 50 50, wasn't it? Yeah. I didn't think she would die because I don't think Casey would have done that. She wouldn't yeah. have. Because I was thinking as well, like, just the logistics of that. Yeah, logistics, I thought she would have gone back in time. But even, like, the logistics of her going back in time, like. Yeah, it would be with all the knowledge you that have she all has. those memories of someone, yeah, that, like, isn't even alive yet. And, like, you know, all. Well, if you think about it, towards the end, when August. It's been three months for August, but a second for Jane. Maybe it's one of those yeah. instances where she actually, you know, she goes back to the moment where she's just on a train. Perhaps. Yeah. I don't know. Again, the science, like, I don't care for it. I'm just here for the love story. Yeah. And I was um thinking, I was like, a 50-50, like, either she stays and it's great, or, like, if she goes back, like, wouldn't it be cool to have, like, like an old lady coming into Billy's or yeah. whatever? Yeah. And being like, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> like, the, wouldn't that also be so weird? Because, like... Yes. <laughs> it's sex on a subway in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't that the American dream? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah and just it's weird it'd be weird as well because it's like you knew like my like uh, my uncle or whatever yeah as well like i don't know but again logistically i don't care it was a cute story i love it i loved it i also loved like all the romantic <laughs> scenes and like all the smutty scenes like <laughs> i think like i don't think i've read any like women on women love scenes before so i have nothing to compare it to but like these were immaculately written it's fantastic i know right i was like damn where's my jane (laughs) it's like it's like that girl on tiktok with the stick she's like when will it be my yeah g G whistle or whatever her name is (laughs) look i don't don't know usernames but yeah it's it's so funny all right perhaps we can just talk about a bit of the plot i'm sure you can do a little quick overview because you're good at that Yes, so, um, overview, August is moving to New York because she hasn't found a city that, like, feels like home to her, she's, you know, classic, she's 24, I think, like, trying to find her life, she goes to Brooklyn College, she's looking for somewhere to live, Mm -hmm. and she meets, she finds, like, a flyer, and she meets Nico and Myla, who have an apartment, and they also live with Wes, um, Nico is a trans man Mm -hmm. comes out in a very just not significant way which is great just chill it is what it is yeah wes is a gay man with some self-love issues Mm -hmm. don't we love that (laughs) yeah and myla is an electrical engineer yeah she has a degree in electrical engineering yeah she's a badass moonlighting as a antique store employee (laughs) an artist an artist yeah be like, of course there had to be like a super sciencey engineer to be part of the story though yeah. to put all this together. But, nah, but I, I was, it. yeah, I was saying like she was saying like I was thrown. I was like, oh damn, women in science, yo. Women in STEM, we stand. Yeah, and Nico is a bartender, but apparently he's incredibly bad at it, mm-hmm. and he is also a psychic sort of. Yes. 
Do you believe him? <laughs> yes. I always believe psychics. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. From one sort of, like, empath to another. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and I guess as August is starting her life, she gets on the Q train. Um, I think it's like first day of college for her, and of course she has to take a tumble and spill some coffee on her, and Jane catches her, or this mysterious stranger catches her. Yes. And saves the day, gives her her scarf as a, like a covering. And August is like, no, I don't want to keep it. But Jane's like, you know, you're going to have to give it back then. I love that. And then, yeah, they're on the same train, morning and night, mysteriously. Very sus, very weird. Very sus. And then it's discovered, yeah, that Jane is stuck on the Q train. She's been displaced from 1977. Yeah, it's 70s. I must say, she did so well in, like, adapting to whatever everything August was, like, telling her yeah. and teaching her. Like, I would have probably freaked the fuck out, to be honest. Yeah. I'd be like, excuse me, what? <laughs> yes, because um, August gets a job at Billy's, which is a pancake parlor, and um, August is working at Billy's, and she gets the Sue special sandwich, and she talks to... um. Jane on the subway about it and she's like that's my special like they named it after me or whatever and she's like yeah I used to work at Billy's and then August finds a photo an old photo from the opening of Billy's and it's Jane in the photo and she's like what the fuck something is happening yeah my groins have feelings (laughs) (laughs) tattoos and all (laughs) yeah yeah in all their glory her smelling like pancakes is created that sensory memory and then that's kind of when we learn that the best way for Jane to remember well once they establish that they're displaced and whatever August helps Jane regain her memories by doing all these like sensory sort of activities like eating different bagels and to extreme extents making out (laughs) yes (laughs) having little kikis (laughs) and yeah, and the further they kind of went in some tasks, you know, the more memories she regains, and <clears throat> then they conduct. They have a, a hypothetical idea that how with how Jane got trapped, and then they try, uh, they discover they should try and recreate that sort of traumatic event. Yes. And then that's where the rest kind of ensues, I guess. This kind of comes in line with like an amne- amnesia type of trope, or like mm. losing memories trope is like the two parties will kind of cross any boundaries they need to in order to figure out you know figure it out and all that type of stuff but then it's the there's sort of like the emotional boundary especially with august in this situation where you know she has a super crush on this girl yeah and as and she would love to make out with her on any sort of basis but like but this is in the name of research and i just love it when they you know they push that boundary and it's like it's just research but now as soon as feelings get involved it's like uh i just love that yeah and jane's like obviously like you didn't just kiss me for research like <laughs> and they yeah. like, kind of like admit that they like each other yeah and then yeah they like figure out that jane's kind of connected to the electricity and she yeah makes the train lose power because she's horny <laughs> <laughs> i love that but like surely but then i thought like wouldn't they have caused the proper outage when they were having sex or something because they're just i don't know yeah i don't know (laughs) maybe that would have been too intense i don't know when there was some orgasming happening yeah exactly like boom power outage (laughs) yeah that's how i thought they were gonna resolve this to be honest yeah yeah i was like okay they're gonna come (laughs) (laughs) but yeah um yeah i'm just a sucker for that you know crossing the boundary but now feelings are involved like i love that trope eat that shit up (laughs) (laughs) good soup And, of course, along the way, um, August invites her roommates, and now I'd say good friends, to kind of meet Jane and help her in this disposition. I think as well, this is kind of goes into that found family trope as well. For sure, absolutely. Especially, yeah, being a queer book, it, you know, there's still a lot of adversity out there and a lot of people cop a lot of negativity from either friends, family, and workers, and just strangers in general. And, you know, I just love the whole coming together because into a group because they don't care about who each other or what they identify as and all that type of stuff. And they just love them for their souls, which is how the world should be. Yes, definitely. And of course, this book does have some kind of like 
not intense scenes of homophobia, but like like say Jane and August would make out and then someone would be staring at them and then Jane goes off at them. Like those types of moments. But I suppose Yeah, there was that moment where she was saying that some old guy said something to her and she punched him and they go into a fight. And I also even though I kinda hate I hate the pushing away kind of little trope thing as well, because it's like you've almost gotten to the end and it's like, you know what? Nope, stay away from me. I don't want to yeah. get through with this anymore. Yeah. yeah. It was heartbreaking as well. Because then I got worried because August stayed away for five days and if she stayed away yeah. for a week, then Jane would have, like, they'd have to start all over again and they just don't have time for that. Yeah, I know. Also, I noticed in the beginning of the chapters, it started off as, like, a news article and it'd be, like, about this girl on the train, like, this leather jacket, this dark hair and all that. Yeah. And, like, they'd end up being photos of her as well. Um, you know, just out of focus, a dark-haired woman reads a book with headphones in and blah, blah, blah. And it just goes to show when they were fighting, Jane doesn't realize the impact that she has on other people, like as part of who she is and her soul. Like she helps people, yeah. she talks to people, she keeps people kind of connected um, on the train. And it's like when she was telling August, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. It's like, Jane, you don't realize how much you've affected people. It's like. Oh, no, no. Oh, so and also, like, yeah, at the end, like the, the whole staying away thing, it really leans into that if you love someone, you'll let them go. Like. Yeah. As meant to be, they'll come back. <laughs> I'm glad that was short-lived, though. But of course, August can be a bit stubborn. Maybe it's that P.I. in yeah. her. And, yeah, she doesn't give up on her, which is great. Maybe we can move on to, like, a fun thing that happens. Like, Jane celebrated her birthday on the train because everyone knew she couldn't jump off. Yeah. And they all came to her and... Well, came to her, uh... Or... Oh, or oh, what is it? Carriage a carriage yeah, the, actually the I don't, is train it really? car yeah car that's it because like it's a Your, subway train it's like it's a bit different to like a like a traditional train so like yeah what's the terminology terminology um and yeah that was fun that was so cute and i love that um jane made uh, august made sure jane stayed kind of connected through the phones giving her her extra or burner phone to kind of yeah. stay connected with everybody even when they were making up their plans and everything for how they're gonna recreate the blackout. Yeah, that was cool. I liked that. I liked all the like in the phone on the speaker and like the little espionage. and then not like and turning things off. Yeah, that's cool. I like I love like little things like that. Like everyone planning and like I love little. I don't know what it's called. I guess like a little like a montage. I guess because in my head like it's split into like the different parts or whatever. Yeah, and like everyone has like their own like part to play and like it's it's so cool. And of course, it almost gets fucked up twice. Uh huh. <laughs> and then. Uh, who was it? Isaiah comes and saves the day almost. As yes. Well. Has a moment. Yes. And I love, like, Nico and Milo's little, like, Milo saying, like, everything I'm about to say to this guy is a lie. Like, I love you and I yes. marry, I'll marry. i marry you. Like, and Nico's like, I have a ring at home. Like, like yeah. Oh, I just love the banter between everybody, too. Mm. It's just so good. Again, yeah, it just sure. gives, it gives off such a millennial book as well. Yeah. A very young person, which is great. Because I'm yeah. sick of, like, super fictional unrealistic characters for now yeah. i didn't think like again because i didn't read the blurb like that this was gonna go like to that supernatural place mm. or sci-fi i thought yeah yeah i thought it was just gonna be like that cute like girl meets girl girl falls in love like kind of thing i was like oh okay like yeah i wasn't expect like yeah when i read the blurb that's not what i was expecting at all i heard the word saw the word displaced i'm like huh so how are they gonna yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me what i liked as well like i wasn't really into like the whole like backstory of like her uncle being missing or whatever until like it was all coming together i was just like oh that's cool like yeah yeah you knew jane was somehow in interconnected with everything yeah i knew like check off going straight away <laughs> when that file like <laughs> someone who was there at the same time could also be just another metaphor because you know she is the electric current of like the train station or the train lines and she's connected to everything Eey. 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 smart cookie sometimes yes but no, i think it's just who she, who she is like she's a, as the blurb describes as well like a, like a punk rock like she's just yeah. a superstar yeah a bad, an, like a modern day badass. You know, she sticks up for people, fights for what she believes in. I also liked the learning of like her tattoos as well. As yes. part of her memories, like as she was getting her memories back, it's like, oh, this is this represents my mum. This represents my dad. This is yeah. From this time, Even though blah, she blah, hasn't, blah. she didn't speak to them. Like yeah. 
But then I was thinking as well, like, that's cool, like, August finds, like, where her uncle went and stuff. But then it's, like, I still, like, think about, like, like, Jane's family for so long had no idea, like, what happened to her. Like, she yeah. just disappeared off the face of the earth. And then, like, I know at the end, like, um, August is like, oh, I found them. It's like, how do you, like, just rock up at their shop? Yeah. And be like, here's and be your... like, hey, yeah, I haven't changed in 45 years. Like, I'm still, I'm 24 mm. or whatever, I'm 25. <laughs> Drop the skincare routine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, I get, I'm kind of... Yeah, well, I'm glad the book stopped when it did because I didn't want to care about the intricacies of that. I didn't want to care yeah, about again, the like, logistics. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, just, yeah, again, like with the logistics, like, yeah. I mean, how does could, that work? It could be a nice little prequel, or not prequel, maybe like a it's novella. A novella. Perhaps. Yeah, I don't know if that's Casey style. This is the first book I've read from from them, so. Yeah. Although Red, White, and Royal Blue is coming up next, so yes. <laughs> looking that forward to that. That we didn't realise it was also written by Casey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, a very good accident, I would say. Yes. Um, a happy coincident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just love this book. I read it in one sitting, and like I don't know, I was just smiling like an idiot the entire time. I was like, "Oh, this is so I cute." Will admit, I did tear up at the end. Yeah. When yeah. Jane came back, and like August is like, "It's been three months," and Jane's like, "Oh." Oh, shit. oh my god, like, realises, like, how long it's been for her. But, and then August is like, I didn't stop loving you, like. Oh, yeah, just all these de love declarations. And, oh, oh, I'm a sucker for it. <laughs> yeah, and they took forever to tell each other, or to admit to each other. That you I know, like, the very last, late. like, she's leaving. And you're yeah. like, I love you. Yeah. Again, a sucker for it, though. <laughs> yeah. Eat oh, yeah, I was, I was into it. I was like, yes. If anything, that was making me more horny. <laughs> <laughs> Just say you want to have sex with somebody on a, on a subway. Like, that's your dream now. <laughs> Logistically. 3am. <laughs> I want to have lesbian love sex on a subway at 3.30am. The American dream, as I said. <laughs> American dream. But, it, like, again, I keep saying take a shot every time we say logistics. But, again, the logistics of that as well. Like, I, I, I like to think that it was, like, a supernatural, like, sci-fi thing where, like, no one would have been able to enter the subway car at that point because they were, like, having sex. Like, and she was, like, giving off the vibes. But it's, like, imagine that, though, in real life. Like, someone walks on just, like, whoops. Actually, I'd be, I'd, like, do not touch me. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even, I don't even know what, like, the subway courtesy is in New York City. It sounds pretty, yeah. it sounds pretty rough as well. A lot of people, it's, it seem, don't seem pretty nice as well. And, like, yeah. unhygienic as well, because they talk about rats being there. And it's, like, uh -huh, pretty unhygienic, unsanitary place. I also just love, there was a moment where... It just goes through August teaching Jane about like well, catching her up on what on past events and stuff, and like it's like we don't talk about twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so does the pandemic not exist in this book anymore? Yeah. Well, when is it, when did this come out? Twenty twenty one. Oh, it's a new baby. It's a new baby, fresh baby. Yeah. Yeah. We don't talk about twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, yeah, obviously had a bit of a chuckle, bit of geek, bit of a giggle. And I also just love, like, Jane is such a romantic type as well. Even if she probably wasn't even trying to be in the beginning, like... Yeah, like, she gives off this, like, punk rock, like, edgy yeah. vibe. But she's like, no, she's a sucker for Calling the love. Calling August magic as, like, a compliment. It's like, oh. Yes. And I just love, like, every time she's like, what the fuck, August? Like, <laughs> and I'm like yes! <laughs> like, when she's, like, wearing, like, thigh-high socks or whatever, it's like, it's that thing like you don't even realize what you're doing to me. Like, just, just, oh <laughs> yes. What I would give for someone to call me magic, like I would melt oh. in a puddle, far out. And like I'm usually not into like angel or whatever, but when she's like going down, and she's saying like something about like angel, it's like mm. <laughs> I'm a sucker for it. Or when someone's like, yeah, you like that? You're like, go. <laughs> <laughs> Yes! <laughs> You're done. You're done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but now nah, I get that. Now, nah, yeah, and yeah. The the smart scenes were yeah, like sexy and romantic and just fantastic. Loved it. But yeah, Jane just seemed yeah, the romantic type. And it shows because of her like past lovers as well. She had so many, but like had to let her go. So was she really a catch? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> 
but yeah, just with Jane as well, um, you know, calling up that radio station and playing her favourite songs, and it's like, oh, so good. And the ones that were obviously flirty, I don't even remember the titles, but like, yeah, she's damn bad. Yeah. I was surprised, sorry, by like, because I think it, it's not even that many chapters. Yeah, no, no, I was really su- surprised. Yeah, like it's 15 chapters. And like 400 odd words. I'm like, where's chapter, or should we have to chapter 30 by now? <laughs> yeah, because when I was listening to, wait, 15, I lied, that's a lie. Yeah, because I was listening um, in my audiobook, and yeah, I was up to like chapter 10, and I was like, I was like, wow, and like a lot had happened, like there was so much information, and I was like, oh, if this is like 30 chapters, like what else is there to come, like? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute, I'm an idiot. I, I don't know, I think I kind of like the short, or not the short, I'd say. Short, or like, less chapters. Well, I think also because it's a tall book, I'd say as well, so like you can fit more on a page. Yeah. You're taller, how fucking dare you? <laughs> I don't think it's that tall. I thought the writing was actually quite small, like the the text. Yeah. Actually, what happens? They fit a lot into this. Yeah, book. It, it reminds me of like a t- typical Sarah J. Mass book. Again, read it in a day, just smashed it out. See, I look at page, I look at page numbers now. I'm like four hundred pages. That's a day. That's a day. That's a day. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I skimmed a fair bit too. <laughs> a lot of like just descriptions. I skimmed a of lot of yeah description stuff. Yeah, I just want to get to the dialogue. Not skipped, skimmed. Do we think at the end, sorry, that it was left on like a resolved note or like a good note? I think it was a good note in terms of like Jane coming back. Like that's all great. I think it's like so typical of like, you know, there's like the stereotype of like um, lesbian women two weeks got the, like two weeks in they've got the U-Haul like moving in together. Yeah. Um, I think that's so funny because yeah, like, August is like, like, Jane just goes back to her place after going, walking into Billy's, and she's like, oh, like, I love how you've just, like, invited yourself to live with us. Yeah. But then again, like, take a shot logistically, like, yeah, how else is that going to work? Like, if she, she needs to, like, she'd have to go get, like, a fake ID and, it, like, a whole new, like, yeah. fake everything, yeah. because how is she meant to explain that Jane Sue, or, like, Bayou Sue, like, yeah. isn't 75, she's... Yeah. <laughs> On a, yeah, on a real birth certificate, she'd be like, yeah, 75 or whatever. Yeah, like, how do you get, like, a, a bank card or, like, a license? It would be very rude to save this girl and be like, you're not living with me, <laughs> go figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love you, but, uh... <laughs> We're not at that stage yet. <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah, I agree, yeah. I think Myla gave her a fake ID of sorts. Oh. Because the engineer, like, she's just a smart, badass mm. bitch, we love that. But, yeah, logistically... Yeah, but in terms of the, it's kind of open ending where it's like, all right, I'm gonna find your parents. We're never gonna really know how sh- she feels because she did say, you know, she's nervous, yeah. but it's something that she does kind of want to do and pursue, which is great. So it's it's a nice resolution, le- maybe lead to a novella, but I doubt that. It's just a nice. I think it's a nice ending with yeah. hope. And I think because where like you and I are so used to reading these like you know eight book long series or whatever that we're like no we need some resolution like we need a final point where we're like we need an absolute we read the conclusion books and, yeah it's like I'm satisfied but I could always have dessert like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah there's always room for one more yeah always room for a little cheeky desserty <laughs> yeah nah yeah I'm satisfied though yeah same so, but yeah. I could always go for more yeah. <laughs> But I also th- somehow thought that, like, during this process of finding her memories and everything, August was going to, like, look for her parents and then, like, bring them to the train station. I thought that was a thing that was going to happen. Or, yeah, or even with, like, Jerry or Billy, like, convince them to go to the train station and talk to Jane. Like, was that not an option? Yeah, or Lucy. Or Lucy, yeah. So that's what I... Or maybe they just didn't want to freak out. But, like, or, yeah, I'm not sure how they would actually react It'd be freaky. And then, yeah, I don't know all the intricacies of the subway or anything, but, like, yeah, at, surely at some point these people have been on the train. Yeah. But then they, they were saying that, like, her friends had, like, never seen her or whatever until, like, August, August introduced to them. Yeah. But then other people had seen her, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it either, now that I think about it. Because, yeah. yeah, again, all those posts in the beginning of the chapters, it's like... It's referencing Jane, obviously, and it's like, oh, I've yeah. fallen in love with you, or what, all that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all fell in love with Jane, let's be honest. Uh-huh. And 
then her friends don't see her until yeah they meet august yeah yeah it's weird like I maybe it's like one of those things where like you know you see like a thousand faces in a crowd and it's just like you're just mm-hmm. like oh, okay like it's just a, a face a wash like washed away into like a sea of faces maybe. and then it's like oh and like now i recognize well, you or maybe something. people just really do ignore each other hard on the subway and they don't give a yeah. shit about the people around them <laughs> yeah so that could possibly be it and like she's not on the same spot in the same cart every day she's like every day yeah in bits and pieces and even it's described the cart looks different itself so like i don't even know it's a bit of a mind trip as well in that Mm. regard but i don't care i loved it yes Um, it was really cool learning that she could kind of walk across the train across yeah to the different carriages and stuff that was pretty cool yeah but yeah, and the whole, yeah, just the whole resolution of the, like, oh, she has to be on the third rail, she has to be touching it, and all this type of stuff. I'm like, I can't even really visualize this. I was well. like, what does this mean? Yeah, yeah, I was like, the third rail? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Alrighty, so towards the back end of the book, as we all know, um, Billy's is up for sale, and they are going to try and make up a fundraise the money in order to buy it themselves. And so they wrangle in the help of their drag queen friends. Uh, yes. We- uh, not Wes. <laughs> Isaiah. I forget yes. her uh, drag. Antidepressant. Drag- <laughs> Antidepressant. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And um, then we learned Winifred. Uh, he is also a drag queen and it's actually quite yes. a popular one. I forget his. I know it's like Bumbaclat or something like that. Bumbaclat. Yeah, something like that. And, and they're huge hits in the drag scene and in New York City, so. They end up getting permission from like council to go to this like what underground like railway, like uh, I'd say abandoned like abandoned area railway yeah yeah warehouse in order something. to up the numbers which is fantastic and of course they have a plan to obviously that fundraiser in itself was a guise in order to cause the blackout and honestly I wonder how you'd be like you're at that fundraiser you're having fun having a ball getting pissed and then suddenly like it's a blackout yeah like. <laughs> What an inconvenience. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Would there not have been, like, a massive panic? Maybe, but, like, I guess, like, it's New York subway. And I oh, guess that's right. And I kind of used to it, like, being blacked out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's pretty much, I think, shut then for maintenance, essentially, the next day anyway. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, spru- I know. But, like, even in a restaurant or, like, I know at my bowling alley, like, sometimes on re- very rare occasions the power would go out either in summer or obviously during a storm and everyone like freaks out yeah so like i'm sure there was a little bit of a tense moment there but yeah when i was oh. working in the restaurant we'd have over summer occasionally like blackouts yeah everyone's like, obviously stuff. like we have windows so you can still see out and stuff but um yeah everyone's like oh what do we do like, blah, blah, blah. yeah like, the phones are down into that initial down, panic like... yeah i'm sure there yeah. was some of that at that fundraiser gig as well yeah but yeah i'm ultimately glad august didn't die sorry i just became overly aware of my breathing and i feel like i'm breathing (laughs) heavy oh that happened to me once i remember i was working and the other worker like i didn't think i was breathing that loud (laughs) the other worker was like are you all right are you an asthmatic and i'm like am i really breathing i just started breathing really hard became really aware of it i was like oh fuck (laughs) if she can hear that (laughs) ever since then like and i was wearing a mask as well so i'm like i must be breathing super loudly in order to um, so yeah, oh, ugh. shout out to all you hyper aware breathers out there, I guess. <laughs> we are <laughs> no, one of you. <laughs> you read those like text posts and it's like, when you become aware that like, you can feel your clothing on your skin <laughs> oh, or like do your that. tongue doesn't do has that. can, <laughs> doesn't ever sit comfortably in your mouth. Like yeah. it's always touching something. Yeah. Like, ah! <laughs> Thank you for that thought. You're welcome. No, fuck up for a li- and then yeah, like when you become aware of your breathing and you're blinking. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you be worried about You're it done. You're yeah, done. Kenzie, I'm cancelling you. You can just be quiet for the moment. Oh. No. But yes, and of course, <laughs> moving, on, moving on, we digress. Um, uh, Myla has connections to that power plant that they're at or whatever station control panel. Yes, because her ex-boyfriend's uncle yep. is the manager or something. Convenient. Yeah, very convenient. We love it. I don't care. Yeah. Looking past it. Looking past it. <laughs> and obviously it's a relative... Well, initially the first blackout didn't work. Everyone's like, what the fuck? And obviously they had... There was a second surge thing happening. And mm. um, obviously there was really no plan C oh. after that. And then, yeah. you know, it was the whole realisation. Oh, the only reason why 
Jane was able to kind of maintain her memories is because of August and her presence. So she pretty much anchors her in this kind of time period. And yeah. then, yeah, she stomps on over all love in her eyes and in her heart. And she's like, I will sacrifice myself. And then, boom. Mm. Logistically, <laughs> <laughs> I... I don't know how, like, it'd be one second for Jane and three months for August, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that way. I think, like, maybe she was in, like, a waiting room sort of situation where, like, yeah, it felt like one second, but, like, it was, yeah. And then I was like, okay, but, yeah, if, like, so much time has passed, like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but seeing past it, I don't care. Yeah. Just wanted to bring I'm it just up. like that meme where like yeah. you're trying to figure out all the maths like yeah. or like the new one with like the plants like butterfly in the sky. Yes, yes. <laughs> Honestly, if you're a long time listener, you're probably sick of how many TikTok references we've made. We have to make at least three an episode around. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same ones. They're just so, just so relevant. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, Jane becomes a cook at Billy's now that it's and oh uh, yeah, August. Uh, I thought she was gonna get a, a lot more money than that it was like fifteen thousand yeah, dollars and it was, it was fifteen thousand dollars just enough to cover yeah they needed like fourteen thousand yeah she had 15. and so yeah it's like in the end yeah she ended up with like five hundred dollars inheritance and i was like well you live in new york that's gonna be gone in a week not a lot of change out of that unfortunately so yeah i'm happy with the ending like again like i don't want to have to worry about what jane's gonna do in terms of yeah getting a bank account she, like i'm sure she's getting paid cash <laughs> cash in hand yeah she doesn't have to pay tax How's that? Ooh. In this economy. But then, know. like, again, like, what if they want to get married? Like, you need your birth certificate. What if yeah. they want to go on holidays? You need a passport. <laughs> Don't like... make me worry about that. Let's not worry about that. <laughs> um, they're just going to have to stay in What if they want to adopt a child? <laughs> yeah, look, I don't want to think about it. <laughs> they're happy, perfect, in love in my eyes. Leave it, leave yes. it be. Okay. Um, see, I, I'm kind of glad, yeah, well... We hope we don't get a second book because otherwise they will all come into play and then it'll probably lead to more like frustration and I don't I don't yeah. want there and to... I just think as well like she already kind of went into it in the um like Jane did in the book but kind of glossing over like I feel like at some point she has to have an existential crisis <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I was thinking yeah that's what I was gonna say like she's gonna have a breakdown and be like well what if I wanted to go back and then <gasps> yeah the drama and, and like conflict. you get yeah she gets two lives essentially well, it's like, like I didn't actually choose to stay in this world. It's like, I don't, I don't ever Yeah, and again, there. when she was saying, like, one day, like, she woke up and, like, everyone she knew and loved was, like, gone or dead. Yeah, like, I think, yeah, their initial fight, I think that was a taste of the existential crisis. But Jane is just too yeah. cool, calm, collected, and we did not want to see these two uh, break up at all. I would have probably liked a little bit more of existential crisis, again, because she was a little too cool and too adaptive yeah. about it all, but... Nah, that's good. And then I think, not that it would ever happen, but if they were to break up and then, like, she met someone else, Oof. how do you... It's, it's like, like I... oh, like, where, where did you grow up? Like, what did you do, like, as a kid? Oh, oh I listened yeah. to cassettes. So, yeah, almost, and they... you better put a ring on it. Like, even if it has to be illegally. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm just getting too much into yeah, the... intricacies and yeah. logistics. <laughs> yeah. Say logistics one more time. <laughs> logistics. <laughs> Perhaps we can just do a quick run through of the uh, other characters, like just initial thoughts. So Myla, oh, yes. badass, super smart, wasting her talent on art. No, it's actually quite, I reckon it's honourable. Like, you know, she has a high degree. She can use that probably whenever she wants. And she wants yeah. to pursue I what think, she loves. Especially in this economy. I think like, yeah, the best advice is like, just get something that you can fall back on. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't care what you do in your life, I don't care where you end up, but, like, always have a backup plan. <laughs> I don't know what the job market's like in America, but I'm sure she could snag a job anywhere with her engineering yeah. degree, for sure. Yeah. Um, or maybe they'll all just end up working at Billy's and they'll just stretch the payroll as far yeah. as they can go. <laughs> but, yeah, so Nico, I liked him. I loved, I was going to say before, I loved the millennial, let's just do a seance. <laughs> and, like, let's just... I kind of... loved his energy from the get-go. I was yeah. like, yes, Nico, you are my, like, twin flame. You are a man that I love. <laughs> a man written by a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I, it's... like, listening to my audiobook, like, the voice they put on was like, yeah, like, I can just, like, feel, like, your energy and, like... 
you know and it came off like a dude bro. oh it's like this hipster dude bro trying to stay relevant but reading it when i switched to reading it like i did my own yeah. i was like yes i love you <laughs> i will die for you <laughs> yes um uh wes bit mysterious mm. kind of yeah i don't know the self-deprecating kind of over it a little bit to be honest yeah. you know what it's probably a long time off in books apart from like reverse harem situations mm -hmm. but i feel like nico and myla were giving off like poly vibes yeah for sure yeah so i would have liked to have seen that but yeah that's okay yeah oh well but yeah wes a bit mysterious came in kind of clutch towards the end in love with Hosea yeah. and obviously doesn't want to love anybody almost and then Isaiah is trying so hard to like break through the walls and the shell and of course they did um but Wes yeah I don't know the conversations with August was always quite deep and personal yeah um honestly I've just I've just forgotten like it, their backstories essentially like that's okay Wes like but... Wes dropped out of architecture oh, that's design right, yeah. school and his parents kind of disowned him yes because he just wanted to be a tattoo artist yes and he tattoos Jane at the end as well I yeah. think I like oops sorry sh 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 sorry um <laughs> you're done I like that you know Myla and Nico are kind of those friends that just say go for it do what you want we believe in you we support you and Wes is that person friend who is sort of saying go for it mm. but also let's be realistic <laughs> yeah yeah i like that the uh the balancing act which was good yeah yeah because you don't want people to just blindly be like do whatever you want like you need to be grounded in your ideas yeah. as well you, or humbled yeah. if you will yeah. and i enjoyed nico's sort of psychic stuff when he was saying oh i know you've got a lot more to say to jane yeah. pushing august in but like the we, way to but like we all knew that you. we all knew yeah that. we all knew <laughs> There has to be these convenient moments where the, they yeah push August along. Yes. Um, and Isaiah, antidepressant. I love that. Yes. <laughs> uh, he meets August early on in the uh, in the book as well, and you know kind of teaches her kind of the rounds around New York. Like, you know, it's yeah. easy to make friends, make connections, that type of thing. Because like apparently they're bitching about walking upstairs to their apartments and like there's yes. a security elevator or something like that there is that's one big thing about new york as well there are lots of walk-up apartments we when i was in new york and i was staying yeah in apartments a lot of them yeah were sixth floor no. or like seventh floor walk-ups no, I can't... like it's yeah i can't imagine living there full time and like having to haul up like groceries and shopping and, yeah like, that just yeah like we'd, we'd haul up groceries and shopping and everything and like, i couldn't imagine because there's no elevators hauling up furniture yeah yeah because i keep thinking to myself like you know what maybe i might buy an apartment then it's like i know they're at you know modern like modern yeah. times now like there's probably an elevator or two in apartment buildings and it's like no i don't want to be able to yeah but there's so many older yeah buildings that yeah. just <laughs> don't have it Sounds like a nightmare, but glad that was resolved, I guess. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, who else? We had Lucy, just a nice kind of worker at Billy's. She'd been there from the beginning, so she was very upset about the whole um, close or yeah, potential closing. Indifferent to her. I mean, she was great. Like, yeah, she was great. She came through. Came through clutch. Same with like Winifred. See, so, yeah, I, I kind of got confused with Winifred because I wasn't sure, like, gender-wise, and I know that's presumptuous to say, but, like, I immediately mm. thought Winifred was a, a lady, which is fine, but yeah. I didn't realise Winifred could be, a, like, a, a male name, but... Oh. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> and also, very interesting to find out that he's also a drag queen. Yes. <laughs> it was a nice little twist. It, it connects everybody together. Yeah, they really are just, like... Little a, circles. <laughs> yeah, just a rat bag group of a found family. Loved yeah. it. And I suppose towards the end, quickly, uh, August and her mum, Suzette, their relationship kind of comes to a nice kind of gentle close as well. Like, they forgive each other, kind of. And... I like, yeah, I mean, I for the sake of closure, sure, but I wouldn't forgive my mum. I'd be pissed. I'd cut her off, be like, sorry, I'd be like, here, look, this is the, this is your brother, He he's dead, so mm. thank you for wasting my life. Um, this is how it's happened don't contact me again yeah 
Because then now that, like, yeah, the closure of her, of her brother is being done, now she's using her now freedom, I guess, to open up dialogue and conversation with August about her life, like, oh, who are you seeing? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's like, well, you never cared from the beginning, so I feel like you're disingenuous now. Just yeah, exactly. Just because you Why have nothing would you else. care now? Just because you have, yeah, this closure that you forced me to deal with this mystery my entire life. And just the whole Jane, like, knowing Augie. And also naming your daughter after your brother, almost. Is that weird? Your mi dead missing brother? Yeah, that's weird. It's a bit obsessive. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, like, and it, yeah, it seems like Augie kind of just, like, ran away from home and, like, be, to be with, like, his boyfriend or something. And, yeah, because it was a car... to be gay. Yeah, and then he just got into a car accident or something. Yeah. I think that's how he ended, how he died. Which yeah. is a, which in comparison... It's it differs from Jane because she's kind of I know she probably would still have to hide a bit in the seventies, but like she kind of I feel like she loved more freely just because of the amount of like yeah. ex partners that she had. And yeah. So obviously Augie took something away from that. Um, or perhaps we can talk about quickly um, the probably significance of oh what was it? It was like a club or something that got burnt down because yeah upstairs club or whatever. upstairs club yeah and it just kind of highlights the sentiment. Of, the, of uh, gay people in the 1970s, which was also heartbreaking. Yeah. Heartbreaking, yeah. But, a bit, but, but I suppose you need to kind of pull back and add a bit of realism to this to a book yeah. kind of like this, just to kind of give the give off a bigger impact. Yeah. Um, and also to see how far we've come. Like, I'm sure Jane wouldn't have thought that, like, in a world like this, like, a, of course there is still more adversity and negativity. But, yeah. like, it's gotten better since then almost, would you say? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And so I think, nineteen seventies Jane probably wouldn't have thought that this is yeah how far we've come. Yeah, and she's a real fighter. And that's why oh yeah she it. is. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything else we could talk about for the moment. If there's anything else, Kenzie. Um. No, I think that's all. I've got yeah a good hour on my recording. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Alrighty. So before the episode wraps, I have a fun little scenario for Kenzie. Well, for both of us. You have to answer it as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the scenario is, just for fun, Kenzie, what, if you were displaced in time, like as 2022 you right now. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that you've got so many issues coming with it's you. It's not the best version of me, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> um, what era would you want to be displaced in? And like, what would be in your backpack? It could be absurd, like... I can even stretch it out to be like, you know, pretend everything is all perfect because I don't care about negative negativity bullshit. Like, get rid of all the political agendas and all that. In a perfect <laughs> era, whatever. You can just go somewhere because of fashion or because of a certain celebrity or whatever. World is your oyster. I want to be displaced in the early 2000s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not too far away. Not, not too far back, actually. Nah. Why is that? Nah, I'm a bit scared of other things. Oh, or I either want to go early 2000s or I want to go like way dramatic and go back to like the 1800s. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but in America. Okay, good. I want to see the revolution. I want to see the Civil War. <laughs> you want to meet Alexander Hamilton? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can change you. I can fix him. Um, yeah, or the early 2000s. Yeah. Because I would want to watch my family from a distance. Kenzie. <laughs> what? It is so heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <that's> so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And in my backpack, mm, I would have like you can use it to mess with people. I don't know. World is yours. I would have cheezels always. Okay. Cheezels for a snack. I would have my phone because I need to listen to my music. Yeah. And you wouldn't have to run out of battery. You could just exactly, exactly. I would have a notebook and a pen. Ooh. Just one notebook, though? I would have several notebooks. <laughs> this is a thick backpack. <laughs> this is a thick backpack and a pen. I would have uh, a lighter, because okay. everyone always needs a light. You can be that person that connects everybody, has a connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. That's it, I think. What would you? Where would you be and what would you have? Just to mess with people, I'd probably go to like maybe yeah, like sixties, seventies as well. But like, <laughs> I would have my phone. I'd probably nice. they'd probably kill me though. Actually, you can't <laughs> be killed <laughs> if people recognize you. Um, 
I would have, yeah, my phone, I would have, because uh, I'm thinking of buying a, a Kindle uh, soon. Oh, yeah? So, like, yes, I'd okay, I would Kindle. take a Kindle. <laughs> yeah, because it would just be, because you could just be, like, reading and your battery never dies and, like, you'll always have books and shit. Like, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. It'd be entertaining. I would have <laughs> a portrait of Taylor Swift with all her Grammys <laughs> and, like, show people. And then maybe a picture of Harry Styles and being like, these are my divorced parents. <laughs> I sided with mum. <laughs> uh, I was going to say stereotypical Australian thing, Vegemite, but like, uh, I don't know, maybe some gum as well. Just like, get, you get bored if you're in, the, nice. in, a, in a loop. Actually, I didn't really get a chance, haven't had a real good chance of thinking about it, but yeah. Kindle, phone, probably that's it, I guess. Maybe a couple of physical books, maybe, maybe uh, throw a glass. <laughs> <laughs> be like this is coming yeah. um, maybe just some extra clothes I guess I don't know leave in the comments if you have any if, like what era would you want to be displaced in what would you have in your backpack as well oh actually no I'd go with you as maybe a couple of notebooks as well and like pens and like just write shit down and observe stuff as well perhaps Yeah. leave it in the comments like what era and what items I would like to hear from y'all can't wait to read Red, White, and Royal Blue. Mm. I'm excited, yeah, to read Red, White, and Royal Blue before it is coming out as a movie. That's right. You know what? Yeah, is it a movie or TV show? I think a movie. Oh, uh, yes. So. I don't know. But if you think about it, everything we've kind of, like, read so far, like, adaptions are coming through. So, like... We maybe... are the, 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 the key to it all. Yeah, exactly. Whatever you want to be turned into a movie or TV show, get us to read it. I wonder, <laughs> it will how, happen. I wonder how many other people think that as well about themselves <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we're not that okay. special after all um, anyway as always thanks for listening yeah keep an ear out on all the socials and on spotify and youtube and soundcloud and yeah. all that good stuff and remember to tune in next week for red white and royal blue yes also by casey mcquiston or mc mckinson mcquiston <laughs> but yeah thanks guys bye bye